welcome back to another installment of the STEM Center's Career Exploration Series. In this series, we are interviewing various STEM professionals to see about how they got into their career, the different career paths that they're in, and what do you as students need to know in order to get into those careers. I am Erin Gonzalez. I'm the Academic Program Coordinator for the STEM Center. Today, I am joined by Ms. Danielle Delgado. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Erin. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're so happy to have you. Um, so to start off with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So I am a native San Antonian. I have been here my whole life. Um, I did participate in Alamo Colleges in my journey and did take some classes at Northwest Vista on a couple of occasions, um, various semesters. So I am a proud Alamo Colleges student. Um, I currently serve as a full-time um, assistant athletic director, faculty member, and various other titles at Providence Catholic School. And I currently am in my sixth year teaching a, a night class at UTSA. Um, and I'm also a licensed athletic trainer and periodically have to use my services in that area. Wow, that's a lot of different roles. <laughs> um, I'm sure that they are all really fulfilling. Um, but how did you get into athletic training? So athletic training became of, of interest to me when I was in high school. Thankfully, I was in um, a local San Antonio high school where I was exposed to that field and sports medicine. Um, from my high school, I was able to attend UTSA and join the athletic training student program um, where I received my first undergraduate degree. There they taught me all of the skills and prepared me for a career in athletic training where I was able to do contract and full-time work in that area. Um, so one question I do have is, as an athletic trainer or just in your, your career in general, how has COVID uh, changed the landscape of, of all the work that you do? Definitely, it has doubled and tripled um, my work. Currently in athletics, as you know, um, with limited capacities and with um, screening rules, um, that makes my job more challenging. We have to screen every person who comes into our building. We are currently allowing 50% capacity in the gym for games, for volleyball. So we have to scan everyone, temperature check them. Um, we have assigned seating. We've got um, our gym outlined with um, all kinds of signage. Um, masks are enforced. Um, so it's very um, challenging and adds to the management of these events that we host. But um, definitely we do everything we can to continue with the protocols and keep our students and ourselves safe. So do athletes themselves have to wear masks? They do until the moment they are physically competing on the court, but they are welcome if they so choose to wear that mask during play. Interesting. I'm sure that makes it challenging for them to, to navigate between mask, no mask, mask, no mask, and whether or not they feel comfortable going completely maskless. Um, yes, we call ourselves the mask police, where that's all we do all day is like, put your mask on, put your mask on. <laughs> that's funny, that's a good name. That's a, I'm sure at some point, once we're all back on campus, we'll probably be the same thing. <laughs> yes. Um, so one question I do have is, if a student um, who is currently attending the Alamo Colleges is interested in athletic training or just in, um, you know, I obviously I think you're in athletics in general, just you're around athletics all the time with it, with your career. Um, if they're interested in that career path, what would you suggest that they, that they do now? One, I would look five years into the future and start considering um, what their potential goals might be. Um, because it is very competitive to be in athletic training, physical therapy, and fields like that. Um, so you really have to make sure you put your foot in the door. So if you are still in touch with your high school coaches, athletic trainers, or anybody that you might know, reconnect with them, ask if you can shadow, volunteer, um, and, and see how you can get your experience so that you are able to 
um, have a better resume compared to someone who's not actively pursuing the career now. Additionally, those science classes that you take, um, especially if you're taking them at Alamo colleges, you know, really invest your time in studying and doing your very best because having those scores transfer to a four year college and having good grades is really going to be beneficial for um, applying to bigger programs and moving forward in this career. So I do have to ask, you know, if you're taking classes at Alamo colleges and then you're transferring on to a four year institution and then um, if you're interested in athletic training, is there any sort of licensing exams or is there anything that they should um, look at, you know, um, I know you mentioned shadowing, but is there like an internship program that they have to take um, once they're, they're at the four-year institution? Yes. So currently, athletic training licensure is a state-level licensure that you can complete after attending an appropriate four-year university. You must be a student athletic trainer um, as part of their student athletic training program at that four-year university, such as if you went to something like UTSA. Um, but once you finish that four-year degree, you have to have completed a certain number of hours in the athletic training room, shadow hours, that they're all kind of worked through that program. At the end, you take a state licensure test, but you can only work in the state of Texas. In the last year, um, they have changed the national certification called the Board of Certification Exam for athletic trainers to a uh, master's degree. So now after that first four year um, education time, you have to apply to a master's program and those are sometimes not offered at those same schools. You, For example, you may have to go to one school for your undergraduate four years and another school for your master's degree. You have to apply to get into that school as well, complete their program, and then take the certification exam so you can work anywhere in the United States. So are there any like perks with the job? I mean, I'm sure there's athletic trainers that are in every every um, different field, um, but can you name a few that, you know, might spark some interest for students? Um, when the, when the San Antonio um, had, when San Antonio had a WNBA team here, um, I did an internship with them and it happened to be one of the years that the Spurs won the championship and they let us be in the Spurs parade. In 2007, we were like, waving in our boats, you know, we, we didn't win the championship, but we got to have a little perk and be part of that whole process, which was amazing. Um, but there are a lot of perks. You, you get access to a lot of sporting events, whether it's your school or your team, you still get access to a lot of events. Um, you definitely always have room to grow. There's consistently new science, new medicine coming out. You can take um, trips to conferences and learn new skills um, and you can work in a variety of settings so it really is a very open career path and lots of options continue to be open to us as athletic trainers whether we're in a school in a hospital in a therapy clinic um, or working with a professional or collegiate sports team wow I think I, the other day I might have heard that Ro like rodeos have athletic trainers. Um, yeah. I never they, even thought that they would even need one for any reason. Yes. So the bull riders, especially, um, there's usually a team. Um, so Justin, the same company that makes boots and a lot of cowboy gear, they actually have a Justin sports medicine team. So it's made up of multiple athletic trainers. They're there on site, right on the edge of that that fence at the rodeo looking on to the rodeo um, and currently one of my friends who's a high school athletic trainer he also does um, side work with the ballet so the san antonio ballet he works with them so you can be in fine arts you can be in obscure sports like the rodeo or you can be in a school or with a regular type of type of team wow that's really cool actually <laughs> It almost makes me want to go back to school and become an athletic trainer. <laughs> um, so just some final, um, a final question is, is there any last words that you would kind of share with our students um, or just some, maybe some information that they might want to look into now or ways that they can probably connect with you? 
I would definitely say that as a product of San Antonio education, um, everybody is connected. It doesn't seem that way, but it really is. So once you choose your career field, be sure that you are always on your best behavior, you are well-dressed, you're presenting yourself and speaking well because you never know who that person may be or who you might need to reach out to. It's all about networking. So always present yourself with the best foot forward no matter the situation. Um, and definitely reach out to others who are, who are already in the career field and who, who know more than you because they've been there. That's a really good information for everyone to know. I think that just goes for everyone in general, not just students. But yeah. thank you so much for joining us today. And um, hopefully once the pandemic is over, we're able to have you back on, we're able to bring you to campus so that way you're able to, to touch base with some of our students. Yes, definitely. I look forward to it. Thank you. Bye.